Liberty Chew Chewing Tobacco presents... Stingray Sam is not a hero But he does do the things that folks don't do That need to be done He's got a bravery inside Children, so young and irresponsible. How quickly they mature and turn into incompetent adults. Incompetent in management and administrative duties. It was this form of incompetence that sent Stingray Sam and the Quasar Kid on a mission without any information. The only detail they were to receive was to be administered at the Intergalactic Hall of Records and Trivia. It is here where we now find our boys perched in a state of readiness. Thirty-four. 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 Thirty-six, 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 no, thirty-six. Thirty-five. Here you go, ma'am. I'm Stingray Sam. This here's the Quasar Kid, and we're from Durango. You don't say. Yes, ma'am. We're on an assignment, and we don't know what we're supposed to be doing. What's your assignment? We're supposed to rescue a girl. Who's the girl? We don't know. We're from the work program. Give me your wrist. That's all I have for you. Well, can you tell me where I can find 38. Some? If I leave this bag here, do you think somebody else could use it? Yes. And they'll be so happy. And I'll tell them it came from you. 38. I don't think it was stupid. You had a plastic bag and you didn't need it. You thought somebody else could use it. Well, either way, you know what that lady did when she just said that? What? She made our day, that's what she did. I think that lady is a genius. Just that one thing she said made our whole day worthwhile. Well, I'm glad something did. It takes 20 of these darn little boxes to figure out anything, and I don't think it's going to tell us much. Yeah, well, let's have a look-see. <laughs> To a father in a middle-class home, no one is more important than daddy's little girl. Unfortunately, the extremely wealthy and the extremely poor fathers cannot share in this sentiment. A female child born to a poor family may find herself in compromising situations in the name of survival. The father of a dynasty would need a son to carry on the family name. It was long believed that a child's gender was determined by its mother. King Henry VIII believed it. He executed several of his wives because they were unable to bear him a son. If Henry only knew what we know today, perhaps he would have cut off his own head. Still, gender-decisive pills were created for the woman to take until five generations ago when a pill was invented to give the father the choice. The wealthy and poor alike began having sons exclusively. As a result, the poor and the wealthy classes found themselves on the brink of extinction until cloning was introduced to the upper class as a mandatory measure to generate the next generation. 
But health risks linked to cloning drained the economy through increased medical expenses. In its last attempt for survival, strange new theories were openly developed, but time was running out and things were looking bleak for the upper class. Until two scientists, known only as Edward and Frederick, developed a radical new procedure. They had successfully blended their DNA and then placed the living embryo into the body of the scientist known only as Frederick. Funding was immediately pulled from all research programs and awarded to Edward and Frederick. When the child was born, he was given the name Fredward. The entire upper class population was impregnated with double male genetic combos, and thus a new generation was born. Frederick and Edward had a baby named Fredward. Frederick and Edward loved their gentle son. Frederick was the world's only pregnant man. Edward might not have been the one. Frederick and Edward had a son named Edward. Max and Clark had a son named Mark. Aldo and Rex had a son named Alex. Bob and Ringo had a son named Bingo. Zach and Deep had a son named Zeke. Bill and Jeff had a son named Biff. John and Mason had a son named Jason. Carl and Bert had a son named Kurt. Reed and Johnny had a son named Ronnie. Chris and Al had a son named Cal. Clark and Biff had a son named Cliff. Walter and Bill had a son named Will. Bill and Kurt had a son named Bert. Bert and Robbie had a son named Bobby. Fred and Bill had a son named Phil. Jack and Ronnie had a son named Johnny. Rich and Benny had a son named Randy. Mick and Jack had a son named Mac. Hugh and Boom had a son named Hugo. Matt and Rick had a son named And so the plot begins to thicken, but not by much. A girl is in need of rescue, and the genetically designed figurehead of a very wealthy planet is somehow involved. But how? Who? What? When? Where? And why? Find out the answers to these questions and more on our next episode of Stingray Sam! <laughs>